Hello there, my highly technological blue friends, and welcome back to another video on the lore of the Tao Empire. My very last Tao video was focused on the technology of the ion weapons. Prior to that, I also made an episode on the Tao Pulse weaponry. And since my previous episode was, surprisingly, more liked than my regular Tao videos, I decided to make today's episode focused on something similar. Ladies and gentlemen, today we're gonna talk about another type of weapon technology, namely rail weapons. I am your host, the Guevesa narrator for today, and without further ado, let us proceed, shall we? Rail weapons are rather large Tau ballistic weapons which make use of electromagnetically induced linear acceleration to fire a projectile at hypersonic speed. Try saying that ten times fast. Rail weapons typically possess an extreme range, and are particularly renowned for their destructive capability upon a single target, especially armored vehicles or fortifications. Rail weapons use a series of powerful electromagnets and superconductive electrodes to accelerate small, solid and conductive projectiles to hypersonic speed. The resulting high levels of kinetic force imparted to the weapon's projectile allows it to devastate and destroy almost any armored vehicle on impact, even at extremely long range. Very few vehicles are able to withstand a direct hit from a rail weapon without suffering at least critical damage. Because the projectile is capable of achieving a velocity of anywhere between 6 and 10 times the speed of sound, it also generates a tremendous force when it strikes the target that is often even more than would be usually produced by an explosive charge of the same size. As such, the speed of the projectile is enough to punch through virtually any amount of armor. The size of the weapon determines the strength of its power source, and thus the kinetic force imparted to the projectile used as ammunition. Rail weapons usually fire single, solid projectiles, and rely on the speed to penetrate armor. Because the projectiles are so small, large numbers can be carried by the weapon's operator at any given time. However, when used against infantry, a railgun can have a devastating effect in which the impact of the round will simply vaporize the target. Those near the traveling path of the projectile will also literally find their breath sucked out of their lungs, such as the great speed. A railgun makes an iconic whip-crack sound when it fires, which is created when the railgun round breaks the sound barrier. Many enemy soldiers have learned to dread its distinct noise, which is only heard after the round has hit home. The basic physical principle behind railgun technology is known to the Adeptus Mechanicus, but the Imperium was never able to utilize it in a worthwhile fashion due to a myriad issues inherent in their operation. Maybe they should just give it to Belisarius Cole and go on a holiday. A rail weapon functions through the manipulation of electromagnetic force. A magnetically responsive projectile in an electrically conductive sheath is inserted between two conductive rails attached to a power source, thus making it a complete circuit. As the current moves through the circuit, it generates a magnetic force that pushes outward, forcing the projectile down the rails. The further the projectile goes, the greater the current that goes through, and the stronger the magnetic force becomes. This, in turn, causes the projectile to accelerate along the full length of the rails, achieving a tremendous velocity by the time it passes the end of the rails and breaks the circuit. After this, another round can be readied as soon as enough charge can be built back up for the next shot. To achieve the charge necessary to fire a shell at combat velocity, typically needs a bulky array of capacitors attached to a powerful generator, which tends to limit the use of most battlefield rail weapons to dedicated vehicles. While a rail weapon is conceptually simple, manufacturing and fielding one presents multiple engineering challenges. Requiring highly conductive material with strong resistance in thermal expansion, an efficient cooling system, and very precise machining processes. Also, methods of quickly servicing and remachining the rails in the field to keep their interior surfaces in pristine condition, as even minor wear and tear could have a significantly deleterious effect on the weapon performance. 
Even before the Tau Empire's first sphere expansion had drawn to a close, the earth gas scientists turned their efforts to further refining rail weapon technology, the goal being to create a version compact and durable enough for use by a firecast infantryman. Thus did the development of the rail rifle begin. Success was not immediately forthcoming. The early rail weapon systems required substantial shielding, so they could avoid flooding their hammerheads and battlesuits with harmful levels of radiation. The shields were inevitably formed of super-dense metal alloy, and contributed greatly to the mass of the weapon. Even when the payload of the prototype rail rifle was reduced, allowing a comparable reduction in power requirement, the weapon was still too heavy to be carried by nothing less than three fire warriors, and was therefore relegated to defensive emplacements. Progress was slow for many years. The Earthcast reduced the rail rifle's bulk by increments, but it was never enough to meet their stated objective. Nevertheless, their labors were not wasted, as many of these refinements were retrofitted onto existing hammerheads or broadside railguns. Even though the goal of a chasse la portable rail rifle was still some years away, rail weapon technology as a whole was becoming more compact more accurate, and cheaper to make every year that passed. The necessary breakthrough finally came in the Second Sphere expansion, during the campaign known to the Imperium as the Damocles Gulf Crusade. It was here that the Tau were faced with a better armed and better equipped enemy than any they had fought before, and the resulting conflict spurred unprecedented advancement in all fields of Tau technology. Among the developments was a new ceramic named Or Es Var, literally Mighty Bulwark in the Tau Lexicon. Originally conceived as an ablative hull material to counteract the devastating effects of the Imperium's Nova Cannons, the material was soon discovered to have unparalleled radiation absorption within a wide spectrum, and better than that, it was light, almost weightless. With the way forward finally revealed, the Earthcast presented the Firecast with a brand new rail rifle prototypes. At this stage, the rail rifle was still undergoing field trial with specialized units, but it was hoped that a new weapon could be issued more widely and eventually even mass produced. The relatively slow rate of fire, the bulk of the weapon, and the early unstable targeting mechanism unfortunately didn't meet the expectations of the ethereal and the fire casts. These early prototypes often displayed a dangerous malfunction as well, where the immense power generated by the weapon could generate fatal feedback through the rail rifle's neural targeting system. And yet, the rail rifle's ability to penetrate armor made it very valuable to Tau forces, despite the difficulties incurred in its development. Indeed, it was discovered in early testing against various armor types in the Tau arsenal that only the armor in the XV-88 broadside battlesuits could provide any protection against its fire. The weapon was capable of even penetrating the hardened carapaces of the larger Tyranid bioforms. The impact of the rail rifle was also such that its target was frequently hurled back by the impact and this effect, combined with the distinctive whine of its hypersonic slug, often also had a demoralizing effect upon the enemy. More developments of the weapon and refinements in the design eventually removed the risk of dangerous neural feedback to the user, and the weapon was issued to frontline Pathfinder units for field testing. This more stable variant of the rail rifle has since been improved continuously throughout the Third Sphere expansion, until it reached its current refined state. At the sacrifice of a small modicum of range, the rail rifle is now used on the move more easily, and can be fired faster. Its projectile can penetrate all known forms of infantry armor, and even possess a threat to light armored vehicles. Nowadays, centuries after its initial development, the rail rifle is a common sight in Pathfinder Vanguard and Reconnaissance teams though it has not supplanted the Pulse Carbine. Indeed, current Firecast doctrine dictates that rail rifles should never be fielded to the exclusion of other weaponry. Even though the current models are considerably more reliable than the initial prototypes, they are still prone to occasional misfires or targeting system failure. 
These mishaps occur very rarely, maybe once in 10,000 firings. But until this minor quirk is rectified, the Firecast will consider the rail rifle an augmentation to Pathfinder teams, but not a mainstay weapon. While the rail rifle officially remains exclusive to Pathfinder teams, there are some rumors that more compact versions of the weapon are still being trialed by Fire Warrior cadres on the Tau Empire's eastern fringe. It is difficult to say whether there is any truth to these stories, though there is a certainty that the Earthcast has a vowed intent to oversee more refinement to the weapon. Their next goal is to evolve the weapon to the point where its killing power is comparable to its larger, broadside-mounted cousin. Some other types of rail weapons include The Rail Gun Rail guns, like all rail weapons, are renowned for their ability to penetrate enemy armor at extreme range. This one is much bigger and mounted as the primary gun on the Hammerhead gunship. Along with standard solid shot rounds, a railgun is also able to fire sophisticated sum munition rounds, consisting of smaller projectiles which can strike a wider area. While the overall damage imparted on impact with this variant of the railgun projectile is less than the standard shot, they are very useful for suppressive fire against infantry targets. The railgun is roundly hated by all the Adeptus Astartes that have encountered it. For not only does it kill the Battle Brother upon impact, it also destroys or renders inoperable the progenoid glands that allow their apothecaries to create more space marines from the fallen. In this way, it doesn't only kill the Astartes of the present, but also kills the warriors of the future. The Heavy Railgun This one is an even larger version of the standard railgun usually only mounted on Manta or AX-10 variants of the Tiger Shark aircraft. Heavy railguns use larger rounds at higher speed, and these projectiles are finely stabilized to provide extra lift, therefore greater range when fired in atmosphere. The Heavy Rail Rifle This one is similar to the larger railgun, but it is also slightly smaller, so it can be mounted on a Tau battlesuit. While this weapon's range and damage is not as great as its larger cousin, it is still very impressive as an anti-tank weapon, renowned for its effectiveness at penetrating armor at very long range. The XV-88 broadside battlesuit is the only Tau unit armed with the heavy rail rifle, and makes use of it as a twin-linked primary weapon system. And finally, the Starship Railgun Battery. Despite more recent Tau advances in superconductor technology, the railguns mounted on Tau warships are so big and require such large amounts of power to fire that they are grouped into batteries and fired one barrel at a time in sequential order, ensuring that the first barrel is loaded and ready before fired again. Tau Starship railgun batteries are considered comparable in firepower and effectiveness to the weapon batteries of macro cannons employed by Imperial warships. And this, my friends, has been what I wanted to tell you about Tau Rail Weaponry for today. Just when you thought you were safe in your Lehman Ross command tank, one of these shoots out from two miles away and literally turns you to vapor. Are the rail weapons among your favorite types of Tau technology? How would you rate them compared to ion or pulse weaponry? Feel free to debate the pros and cons of each one in the comments below if you want. Was the episode informative or entertaining? In that case, please click the like button and subscribe for more content. Also, you probably know this, but YouTube has developed a bizarre practice of unsubscribing you from random channels. So, if you want to stay up to date with my content, please click the notification bell icon as well. Thank you very much for watching to the end, and I wish you all an awesome day. For the greater good.